Hey, uh, buddy. Yeah, we're on. Hi, everybody. Hey. I'm Jay Friesen. I'm Brian Matson. Welcome to Dead Reckoning. And boy, do we have a good show for you today. I think we I'm have really a good show. I'm really excited about um, our Above the Pay Grade segment. Yeah, that's going to be Mary really fun. Mary Carolyn Mann. And here's what I like about her. She's a, a phenomenal photographer, but she's got a real heart for um, helping the poor and the needy. And the stories she can tell through photographs are quite, um, quite impressive. She doesn't know this yet because um, I only briefly brought it up. But I think I'm, and we haven't interviewed her yet either. So, because I'm going to bring up, she did a, she did an art, uh, an art, a photography piece about um, a bunch of refugees in like a little tucked away apartment complex in Atlanta. Wow. The photos are just fantastic. And I know there's a story there. Will she let us share some maybe? I hope the, so. I'm going to, I'm going to ask her. I'm yeah, gonna ask I, her. It'd be really cool to, uh, to be able to share that with, but she's with our audience. She's super artsy fartsy. She's super fun, wildly talented and just, uh, she's so cool. Cool. That sounds fun. And uh, we're only going to have three episodes. Three today. segments. Three, three segments, segments today because I. You're running out of town, I'm man. Out of town. Yeah. Uh, Jay is actually filming a short documentary in uh, Missoula this week. Beer, Tell us about it. Beer, community, and, and faith. God. Yeah. How do those all kind of intersect? Well, I'm going to tell you the story about a little brew called the All Souls Ale. It's brewed once a year in conjunction with a nonprofit by Big, Big Sky, Sky Brewing, Brewing Company. And all the proceeds go to benefit the nonprofit, which benefits the community. And uh, nobody gets nobody gets paid. And it's connected to a church. And it's connected to a church. All Souls, All Souls, Missoula. Um, they have very good artwork. Um, this is actually the first edition of it, so this is several years old. We need to drink this. We by, need to drink this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we're come. I'm gonna be f- driving out to Missoula to film this with do Chris a whole Fenner at Fenner four hundred three on Twitter. So look him up. He's happens a nerd. to be happens to be uh, at Fenner four hundred three. Happens the guy who to does be, these for us. He actually was our director of photography for uh, for this set in this this show. So you're gonna go. F- I'm just totally messing up by throwing around the lights. I'm like, hey, look at the lights. Yeah, he's he's actually gonna watch this and he's gonna blanch in horror. <gasps> Speaking of horror, we have a lot of horror on our spindle today. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut, Shut the, the door, door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. devil. Light the candle, everything is all right. Light the candle, everything is all right. I couldn't really find that harmony note because I think that your melody was a little bit all over the place. We should practice stuff like that. I've never practiced like it. That. I just kind of like winged it. We should really practice stuff like that. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the devil a lot on this week's spindle. Welcome to Dead Reckoning TV. This is the our spindle, spindle portion of <laughs> Show. The devil. <laughs> this is the spindle portion of our show, where Jay and I theoretically talk about current events. Do I want your soul? Talk about current events Stop. through the lenses of our Christian Happy Halloween! Faith. Happy Halloween, everybody! Well, we're getting close <coughs> to Halloween anyway. Or do we? But celebrate we don't Halloween? celebrate Halloween because it's a no good, devil worshiping, God hating, terrible, horrible, bloody thing and. You're going to go to hell if you practice it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so have a harvest party. Or a reformation party. Or a reformation day. Like Actually, I just, you like I just gonna, sort of subtly mocked my our own culture here. Yeah, you just mocked our own church. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. They are big enough to handle it. I'm actually, we're going we're gonna to include a cool link uh, on the show today. A really great video produced by a British gentleman on the history of Halloween and how, how the whole holiday arose as actually a Christian holiday. It is, it's quite enlightening and eye-opening and tremendously well done. So we're going we're gonna to include that hopefully in the, in the notes to the show. But uh, yeah, we are closing in Because we have Halloween. a really great track record for including notes in this We show. have a terrible track record. But if you want to send your donation to Dead Reckoning TV, <laughs> so we, can we can hire somebody, hire somebody to remember no, things like really. show notes... That would although be we cool. would, although we would, if you if you do now, hey, hey, no, I have an idea that brings up. Thing. I like ideas. We do would like to do some advertising, but we don't have any money. So if you want to help us advertise, get the show out. We got some connections of places to advertise. We just kind of need the uh, capital, funds, a little capital. Know. Money makes the world go. Wild. We have uh, we are very grateful here at Dead Reckoning for the support that we have received from uh, a extremely number. Extremely grateful. Extremely grateful from a number of generous people who have made this show possible in um, order to make that happen it was the, to the tune of eleven thousand dollars and we raised all of it from donors yes and we we want to express and it was, our no gratitude. it was not our parents no it wasn't uh we want to express our gratitude because it does take a lot of it takes a we lot are of grateful s- we are to you it takes a lot of money to do a startup like this for uh, Vote equipment. libertarian no i'm kidding 
<laughs> stuff like that. I can't I can't take anything so, seriously today. No, you're kind of that's okay. So so here's a serious story. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia speaking got into of, a little bit of mind. speaking of the devil. Is that what you're gonna say? Speak of the devil. Some he's people, not really devil. I kind of like some him. people think he's the devil, but he got into a cool little tiff with a with kind of a, a mainstream journalist. Recently. Now that is the devil. She <laughs> is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets into it. He's at a public forum, right? And he makes some comment uh, that took her aback a little bit because it was such a stark statement of his own personal Christian faith, Christian belief. And uh, and he saw the kind of the condescension that she had written all over her face, and so he leans over this is in a public forum and he leans over and he he puts his hand fingers up and he says and i also believe in the devil too <laughs> well she got a little really i mean like took it very seriously and took her pen and her pat and started asking him questions about the devil and, and she says uh, how do you think the devil is at work in the world today and he says oh that's simple um uh, making people like you think that he doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> and and one and right? punchline and, boom! and one so uh, good for you tony scalia he actually um went on to talk about how it is a little pretentious to just you know laugh at the concept of a, of the devil when he says look people for thousands of years you know uh, in all of recorded human history have believed in the devil and now in the last what 30 or 40 years people have lost their faith in that sort of thing and somehow you know better than everybody else who's ever existed before it's a little pretentious so that's uh, item number one about the devil and Halloween. I have all sorts of inappropriate. I believe in the devil and this is the devil jokes running through my head right now, but I'm not going to repeat any of them because because mom's watching the show. Uh, probably. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mom is representative of our general audience. How's your mom doing yeah. anyway? Uh, doing very well. Okay. We're done with chemotherapy. Ooh, uh, yes. I believe, uh, believe the next up is uh, radiation, which no one really looks forward to, but light at the end of the tunnel speaking of your mom this is a great segue into the book because she exemplifies my following spindle item okay cool sure uh all right tim keller uh in a in a in his book walking with god through pain and suffering has the following quote related to uh whether or not to live for happiness or whether to live for meaning can i have he, both he says <laughs> to live <laughs> Happiness live. and meaning would be cool, but sometimes that's not possible, which is why Tim Keller's writing what he's about to write. Okay, JR, let me read. Okay, Brian, go ahead. To live for happiness means that you are trying to get something out of life. But when suffering comes along, it takes the conditions for happiness away. And so suffering destroys all your reason to keep living. But to, quote, live for meaning means not that you try to get something out of life, but rather that life expects something from us. In other words, you have only, you have meaning only when there is something in life more important than your own personal freedom and happiness. Something for which you are glad to sacrifice your happiness. Good thoughts from Tim Keller. Um, by the way, if you uh, are unfamiliar with Tim Keller, he's a pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City. If, uh, if you have not read his New York Times bestselling book, Reason for God, you must stop everything you're doing right now and make sure to get that book on order. Tim Keller, of course, a very profound thinker. So it sounds to me like what he's saying there is that if you live for meaning, um, when suffering comes, it's not going to derail you. Exactly. But if which you is, live for happiness, suffering, by definition, his will mom, derail you. His mom, through, uh, you know, through Much our, suffering. Our, our whole church body has been watching this. His mom, through this whole process of cancer, is like exemplifies this to a T because suffering has not, has not, de pain and suffering has not derailed her life. It's actually, I think, amplified it. It is amplified. It's made it more enjoyable yeah. for her. And it to takes some a extent. lifetime of walking with God to build up the internal resources to be prepared for something like what's happened to my mom i think so yeah yeah that's kind of cool yeah now back to the devil i watched brian's mom uh, and the devil i watched a horror movie last night <laughs> brian's mom would win <laughs> <laughs> yes she would and i'm about to tell you how and why i watched a horror movie last night and you are asking me when i, I came into the studio today and jay's jay's like how you doing, man? You seem, seem kind of tired. I'm tired because I didn't get much sleep, okay? I do not watch horror movies, ever. But somebody recommended this. I don't this, like horror movies. And stupidly, I I'm like up late. I like the freaky storylines behind them, but oh, I don't really I'm like I'm up late, and so I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I, I get my iPad and put in my headphones. Oh, why do I do that? So that the sound and the sound effects can be like right in my ears. Okay, I mean, like, 
you know, if there was some ambient distance, it might not have the same effect. But I'm like, if I was watching from around the corner, I mean, white knuckle, white knuckle. All right. This is a movie um, that was written. The story was written by somebody who used to be the toast of the town in Hollywood, but has fallen very far out of favor. M. Night Shyamalan. Who of course wow, did the he has six sense. Uh, the village uh, signs. I've enjoyed. You know his fa- my I've favorite. Movie, all movies. My favorite movie that he's done. Yeah, which is one that most people don't think is unbreakable. Unbreakable. Yeah, it's good. Good Ooh, stuff. It's good. Good stuff. I, I'm a big it's like, fan. It feels like a real superhero movie right there. Yeah. It's like it was, what all these other guys should be I'm trying I'm a big to fan. Do. Apparently, uh, he's so fallen out of favor, he can't get a movie made. So he can't direct a movie. So he wrote the story, and then somebody else did. The movie is simply called Devil. I do not recommend this movie if you don't like small, tight, confined spaces because the entire thing basically takes place on an elevator. I have a fear of getting like buried in a box. Yeah, okay, well, this is not the movie for you because Torture, these just five sitting people... A, sitting in a field in a box. So like five this. people are stuck on this elevator and, and, and of course it gets stuck and then the lights go out and every time the lights come back on, somebody new is somebody else is dead. I like that. that okay. Like fun. No, what's happening is the devil's actually has has gathered this group of sinners and 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 you know miscreants onto this car on the elevator in order to torture them and take them out and collect their souls. So the whole time you have a cop who's up in the control room who can see and he's watching what's going on. He's trying to figure out what in the world is going on here, and the deeply religious uh, security guard um, keeps telling him the devil's here, man. That he's like you're crazy, you know. Well. The devil really is there. So anyway, I'm watching this, and the reason I bring it up, okay, because we're close to Halloween and we're talking about mm-hmm. the devil. Uh, Brian Gadawa, our 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 uh, Hollywood screenwriter uh, friend, uh, guest former guest on the show, episode two, was making a case for horror being uh, an appropriate genre for Christians, and this is a prime example. He says you have to have a moral, you have to have moral content to make a horror movie really work. Um, the punchline of this movie, and this is not too much of a spoiler, is that God exists. Okay, that's the punchline of the movie. But even more than that, somebody successfully resists the devil in this terrifying movie. And you know what weapon this person used to defeat and defuse the devil? It was not holy um, water. It wasn't holy water. The wasn't Bible. A little cross. It was garlic. The Bible. Wasn't even invoking the name Kinda of Jesus. <laughs> wasn't garlic. Wasn't invoking the name of Jesus. This person resisted the devil by repenting. Ooh, I like that. I by like total that repentant. I am guilty. I am a terrible sinner. I did this, and I repent. I am sorry. And the act of repenting diffuses. The devil loves to feed on pride and our own pride of not owning up to things. And Ooh, he like owns that. up to it. I like that. And finds forgiveness at the end of the movie and, so, of course, survives. It's so really you, worthwhile. That yes. was a huge spoiler. Would you end up recommending it? Uh, if you like the horror genre and you like very intense movies and being on the edge of your seat and white-knuckled and not sleeping well, watch this film. It was very good. I'd be curious to hear the dialogue because, I mean, if it takes place all in an elevator. It's pretty cool. Now, what I love about that... Con- yeah, just, well, I look, love the people I'll, on the elevator are like suspecting, elevator. obviously, the person doing the murdering is on this elevator. And so you have all the dynamics of, who's doing this, man? Who's doing this? It's you. It's That's you. Good. And then, of course, you end up with two people left. And both of them know it's not me. So they're like, ah, you know, at each other. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. That's it's good. Very, very, very spine chilling. That's good. Yeah. There's your Halloween movie. Your Halloween movie recommendation from Brian Matz. Devil. Dr. Story Brian by Matzel. M. Night Shyamalan. I'm sorry I don't know the director's name. I would promote it, but I don't remember. Uh, was it a commercial release? I believe it was. I mean, Did I never rent heard it, it on I, iTunes? Uh, no, I uh, saw it on Netflix. You can look at it oh, on uh, Netflix. Cool. All right. Well, my um, speaking of... Um, it, was, it was annoying me. My phone was. You just chucked your phone. It's a good thing you got an, it's otter, an otter box, box. on there. And it chucked By the way, it Otterbox, Red DR, DRTV at redfutonfilms.com. <laughs> just send us the check. All the product placement we do on this show. You think we get a little financial where's, where's benefit? Blue? Where's Blue microphone? Yeah, Where blue? My, buddy, my buddies are Blue. Hey, guys. Hello. All right, anyway. That's why we have the best um, sounding the, uh, show on the, the internet, the by the flags, way. The flags. The flags made, uh, made by the University of Wyoming. We have some cool friends. Well, not not really. Wyoming, but freelance from one of their senior engineers. Okay, so anyway, on his own time, <clears throat> I don't want to get him fired. Yeah, don't get him. I don't trouble. think he listens to the show. So uh, my going back episode, you referenced episode two. I'm gonna episode episode five, where we discuss in the spindle. Brian and I have both come to the conclusion that college tuition is far, 
far too costly. Yes. And we're not the only ones. Uh, Urban On Ramps posted a, a brief quote in their in their uh, on their blog, which basically likens the college education system to learning the game of chess. No, okay. I'm not a big I'm not a big chess guy. I do have one follower who is, and I'll plug him at Christian Glaw G L A W E. He is a uh, Hollywood editor and he chess player. He loves chess. Okay. Absolutely love. It. He's always posting like crazy things about chess that just I'm like, huh? So you anyway. know who else is on Twitter? Just I mean I know this is a total stupid segue, but you just mentioned chess. You know who's an amazing uh, tweeter? Is uh, at. Uh, Kasparov 63. That would be Gary Kasparov, as in the greatest chess player that's ever lived, uh, played all the IBM computers back in the day, Gary Kasparov. Oh, nice. He is a he is a Russian dissident. He cannot go to Russia because he is Vladimir Putin's um, antagonist, and he is very much into freedom and freedom okay. of conscience and freedom of religion, and he's a very <coughs> conservative guy, and he tweets, but he sometimes tweets about chess and some famous games and people he's known. and That's um, cool. Amazing. At, at Kasparov63, you should check it out. The guy's some amazing. People, some people you hope are going to be good on Twitter, and other people are terrible. He's amazing. Anyway, he's so, the kind of guy that you could study chess with, and it would cost you a lot of it money. It would cost you a lot of money, just like going to Harvard to get an education will cost you a lot of money, and if you suck at either one, it doesn't matter who. You have actually studied, you under. studied under. So that's what there's he's a saying. lot of people who graduate from Harvard who are morons. Do you that's know that? what he. That's what he's saying. Can I name one? Yes. No, I'm not going to name okay. one. <laughs> <It'll> <laughs> I think I know where you're going with that. Uh, so that's what the uh, that's what this this brief blog quote is saying. You can liken it to a game of chess, where you, but it doesn't mean anything. And which one? So which one do you think is going to get more traction? Which education model is going to get more traction? Go out and buy it yourself. Go buy the chess program yourself. Go out and learn it yourself. Whether you suck at it or not. You've learned it, and you've only spent fifty dollars. Or you go to Harvard and you study under some uh, shaman, yep. and you know you end up <laughs> paying fifty, 50 thousand bucks a year. Now, we're not totally knocking Harvard and higher education. It's not that there's not benefits to that. <clears throat> the problem is, is that the cost uh, so far outweighs the benefits at this point that we are going to see a serious shakeup of higher education in this uh, in this country soon. Okay, Which is great because the money that I'm stashing away from my kids' education now ain't gonna cut it, probably. Oh gosh, I hope so. You hope so? We're calculating. Four I have we're my, almost a half a million bucks for a college. Oh education. my so goodness! Factoring it with with uh, inflation. That's amazing. Um, I have one last um, one last devil item. Um, uh, evangelicalism is all um, up in a tizzy right now because John MacArthur, Pastor John MacArthur, just had a big seminar. <laughs> No, he well, that would big, be funny though. No, he it? had a big conference called Strange Fire, in which he accused the entire charismatic movement in evangelicalism as being basically of the devil. Um, it's That's a false almost gospel. as bad as him. It's a false gospel. It's bad. Now here's I, I, all I want to say. Look, I I'm not a charismatic myself. I think that that kind of language is very incendiary. But why didn't I get all worked up about it? Why did I not blog like everybody else was blogging about? How come I didn't tweet about it? It's very simple for you. I have one ironclad rule in life. Okay, listen. I recommend it. I never listen to or read or otherwise take seriously anybody who has a Bible named after them. Why? Well, what kind of a person allows a publisher to put their name on a Bible? I'm being dead serious. Uh, somebody with an inflated sense of self-regard that is beyond belief, like, I want the Brian Matson study Bible. I think you got to be incredibly arrogant, and I just make it a policy. You know what? The guy probably has a lot of good things to say. He's probably taught a lot of people. People have probably benefited from him. But you know what? He had a Bible named after him, and so therefore, sorry, I can't listen to you. And you're probably done listening to us, which is great because we're out of time. But I'm, I don't have a Bible named after me, so neither do you I. can tune in next week. I don't have anything named after me except my own Twitter handle. You can tune in next week. I'm Jay Friesen. I'm Brian Matson. And this is Dead Reckoning. <laughs>